those of you who haven't met, my name is Joe McCullough. I am the general manager of Player One Amusement Group. Uh, we are wholly owned by Cineplex, uh, which is uh, what Ben was referencing there. Uh, Player One Amusement Group is a uh, complete end-to-end -end amusement solutions provider. We do everything from distribution to route operations to parts and service and all the points in between. Uh, but one of the things that we believe in is for us to be really good at that B2B part of our business, we need to operate our own facilities and make sure that we understand the world that we're operating in. So we operate uh, a number of facilities. We've got about 45 today. And the rec room is our, is our latest and most ambitious project. Um, has anyone been to the rec room before? I know some of you have. Great. Great. Oh, more than I thought. Fantastic. Um, for those of you who haven't had a chance, I'm going to take you through a visual uh, walkthrough of that over the next couple of minutes. So um, really, the, the reason we started the rec room was, one, there's a, there's a bit of a void in Canada of uh, location-based entertainment facilities. There's, uh, there's a few of them, but not a lot. So we saw an opportunity to, to do something a little bit different in the marketplace. So we started by, uh, by asking ourselves this, this question. You know, and when, when you think back to uh, your, when you were younger, when you were playing on a regular basis, where did that play occur, and how did you feel in those, in those moments? And uh, spoiler alert, because I already told you the name of the brand, The Rec Room. Um, we we kind of zeroed in on that, on The Rec Room, and that place in your home where your friends gathered, where your family gathered, where good things happened, and anything could happen in that rec room. And that was really the essence, that, or some would say the soul of what we created. We wanted to make sure that we replicated not necessarily the experiences of that rec room, but the emotional feelings in that rec room. Did everyone have a rec room in their homes, right, growing up? You know, in, in my home, uh, you know, the rec room for, for me was the shag carpet and wood on the walls, wood paneled walls, and it was, it was where you'd play board games, it's where you'd watch TV, it's where you'd open presents on your birthdays. You know, it was, it was that social experience and that social um, hangout that, that the family had and our friends had. And you'd end up at the person's home who had the best rec room. So with that in mind, we went out to create um, our, our concept. And for us, the rec room is all about entertainment. It's all about creating um, the, the, the shared ideas, the shared idea of fun and shared experiences. And I'll tell you, the rec room is a difficult thing for our marketing team because we purposely designed it so you can't really put your finger on it. You can't really say what rec room is. Yes, it's a uh, family entertainment center. Yes, it's a restaurant. Yes, it's a sports bar. Yes, it's got virtual reality. Yes, you can throw an ax or two if you want. Um, but Really, it's about a shared group of experiences that the consumer can choose what they want to do. Um, so we tried to take you know, a, an incredible uh, amusement experience, um, an incredible food experience, partner that up with some kind of cool live entertainment and, and, and special physical uh, attractions to create that, that ultimate destination. Uh, we like to call it that social playground. So let me show you a couple uh, images of it here. This is our first location in uh, Edmonton. Has anyone been to Edmonton before? Yeah, wow, ambitious. Uh, this is not the time of year to go to Edmonton, but uh, ed if you know, people think Canada's north, Edmonton is north. But the great thing about Edmonton is it's so cold, people need to get inside and do stuff. So this is 60,000 square feet uh, that we built there. Uh, it's a freestanding building. We have 40,000 square feet on the main floor and a 20,000 square foot mezzanine. Uh, and it's, uh, it, our, you know, our, our, we've got four of them now with a fifth one opening in about three weeks. Um, each of them are slightly different sizes. We're, we're working on getting that, that, that sweet spot. We think that sweet spot's around 45,000 square feet. So th this, this next image, I, I love this one. Uh, this one, there we go. This is our location in, uh, in downtown Toronto. Um, for, for those of you that haven't been to Toronto, uh, it's worth the trip. Uh, give me a call. I'll give you a tour. Uh, we really like this one. It's right in the, the, the kind of the heart of downtown Toronto, right across the street from where the... Um, Toronto Blue Jays play just down the street from where the, uh, uh, the Maple Leafs uh, skate around. Uh, they don't really play much, but they, that's where they are. Uh, but what I love about this shot is this is actually the building, and this isn't a, uh, a marked up shot. Or we haven't airbrushed this. This is actually what's in front of our building. It's this grain tower, and it's, this is an old rail yard that, uh, that we've repurposed, and we've taken an old historical building, and we've, we've figured out a better use for it. Um, I'll tell you, the city was really excited about this project because it, it helped to vitalize an area that, was, uh, that, that needed a little bit of help. 
Um, but what I think is cool about, about this is, you know, family entertainment centers can, can really go anywhere. You know, we've got, um, we've got 3,600 locations that we service, and some of them are in some really odd spots. They're in industrial parks, they're on that landing path of the airport, they're way out in the, uh, the, you know, the outskirts of town, and that works because they're these great destination properties. But we chose, in, for this concept, we wanted, to be, we wanted to be in a cool spot because we wanted that to be part of the experience, going to the location, being part of the experience. So this is one that we're really proud of and we're happy about. Um, when you walk into our environment, you're, you're greeted within seconds by an employee. And why we're doing that is because that's what happens in your home. When someone comes to your house, they take your jacket, they throw it in the guest room, and, you, and the first thing that you ask, the first thing you talk about, well, what do you want to do tonight? And that's what this role is. That's what this stage of our experience is. What do you want to do? Do you want a game? Do you want to eat? Do you want to hit the bar? Do you want to watch the game? Uh, are you part of a group? Are you meeting other people? That's where this person helps you to, uh, to experience that. Um, I'll walk you through a little bit of our food and beverage programs. We've got a, a, kind of three unique food offerings that exist at, at the rec room. Uh, this is what we call the shed. Um, uh, because we're Canadian, uh, we thought it was a good idea to have gourmet uh, poutine. Um, anyone ever had poutine before? Uh, you know, this, this is a lot easier if you play along. I can't really see. Um, so, you know, poutine is, uh, for some reason, only Canadians seem to get, but uh, it's delicious if you ever have an opportunity. So, but this is a, a, uh, a, a kind of a, a belly-up counter service where you can get food and then go out and, and, and experience other parts of the facility as well. Um, not necessarily table service. We have a great bar. Uh, you can see tons of screens. Um, we've got multiple feeds into these screens so you can watch the game. You can watch, uh, you know, we have, uh, we actually play The Bachelor, which uh, packs the place. Um, you know, it's whatever the consumer is really interested in. We don't put the audio on The Bachelor because that gets weird, but um, anyways, a really kind of cool bar experience. Uh, this is a bar, this is a, a secondary bar that we have. Uh, and, and really what we've done here is we've tried to create spaces where the consumer can have the experience that they want to have. So if you want to be in the middle of the noise, if you want to be in the action, you can do that. You'd go to that other bar. But if you want to be a little bit quieter and you want to have a conversation, well, we've got some spaces for that as well. Uh, we have the 310. That's what we call our restaurant. Anyone know why we call it 310? A little Canadian trivia here. Is there any Canadians in the room? A couple of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Not a Canadian, but great. So we have, uh, in Canada, we have three territories and ten provinces, um, our states, if you will. So they, they make up the inspiration of our food menu. It's not uh, slapping you across the face, Canadiana, but it's certainly inspired by uh, some of our, our um, regions of the country. Um, this is a, an image of, our, uh, of one of our lounges, or one of our restaurants as well. Um, this is what we, uh, this is in our Toronto location, which is called the Roundhouse. You can, we call it that because you can see it's round. Uh, it's a, it's, this is an old historical building that we had to uh, really work with some uh, design challenges, but it was worth it. Um, just want to take you through some of our play. Uh, this is the yard. This is our, um, our arcade. Uh, we've got anywhere from 80 to 120 pieces of equipment, depending on the location. Uh, in fact, the location that has 80 pieces, we recognize we don't have enough, so we're, we're actually expanding that out. We're going to be adding about 30 more. Uh, and yes, the manufacturers, we know. Yes, we're going to, we'll talk to you. Um, but what we see here is uh, a really good assortment of equipment. It's another location, uh, and you can see a really healthy assortment of, uh, of amusement equipment. Uh, this is what we call the trophy case. Uh, it's our redemption store. And, and in here, you, this is where, uh, you know, any traditional redemption counter or redemption store, we have got all those products. You can still get the novelty size pencil. You can still get the plush, but you can also get some branded material and, and some, some higher end prizing as well. Uh, you know, we are playing to a slightly older audience. Uh, we don't have a lot of kids in this environment, but uh, uh, wanting to make sure we've got some cool opportunities for them too. We've got all kinds of uh, uh, physical gaming, if you will. So we've got bowling in one location. We've got virtual reality, um, and we also have, as was mentioned, axe throwing. And, you know, axe throwing uh, has been fantastic. Uh, the only people that seem really concerned about it is the liquor inspectors. Um, but we've, we've gotten through them. We've had uh, no instance, instances, except uh, we had one uh, staff mishap 
Uh, apparently, we should have put in the manual to pick up from the handle, not the blade. But we've updated our manual on that, so we're all good, and that's not going to happen again. Uh, so, you know, this mix of physical attractions and, uh, and, um, and more high technology with the gaming center and with virtual reality does create an opportunity for some quite different things. Uh, we've got live entertainment. Um, this, is, this is the, uh, the kind of one of our halls. Um, you can see the stage in the back there. Uh, this is what it looks like when you're actually on, or one of our other locations when you're on the stage. We do live comedy, we do uh, bands. Um, we do um, uh, corporate events all in this location. And one thing we did learn, if you're going to book acts, uh, if you're going to book a comedian, you probably should watch their routine first. Whew, that gets dicey sometimes. Uh, we learned that the hard way. Comped a couple meals. Um, ultimately, too, is what we've tried to do is create a place to hang out. And, and really, one of the challenges I think that, that we were trying to overcome is what we call the veto vote. You know, when you got a group of 10 people or five people and they want to go somewhere, there's usually someone in that group that doesn't want to do something. You know, it's the guy you don't always invite, but sometimes they're the naysayers. We call them the veto vote. So we wanted to make sure we created an environment where you don't have to do everything. If you're not interested in gaming, no worries. If you don't want to watch the game, no worries. There's other things for you to do here. So we've got these uh, kind of unique spaces where people can hang out. Um, this is, uh, you know, with, with pool tables and shuffleboard and bocce ball and all kinds of cool things like that. Um, the, uh, we, we've added patios uh, in all of our locations. This is great for about the three and a half months a year you can use them in Canada. But... Uh, um, we, when you can get outside, man, we get outside. So uh, th these are really popular. You can see this here. This is that roundhouse I was talking about. You can see the curve of the building. Each of those doors that have the numbers above them, those are used to be an old train yard where trains would go in and park and be serviced. Uh, it's a really kind of cool historical area of the, of the city. So, you know, this is clearly a, a pretty ambitious project, and, and there's um, there's an awful lot going on in these locations, and we're real proud of it. Uh, but I want to just kind of briefly mention this one other location here, one other brand that we operate. This is Xscape. Um, Xscape is, is really just the, the a premiumization of the arcade. There's no virtual reality here. There's no axe throwing here. There's no bowling. It's just our traditional arcade, but we've worked to try and figure out how to make it a little bit better and how do you premiumize that. And we've seen some really great success with this. You know, we've been able to take those really underutilized spaces, um, it, it, often with our customers, and create really great amusement experiences in there. So, you know, in here, you, it's really, it's, it's carpet, it's lighting, it's great staff, it's great redemption counter, um, it's a great brand that all tied together really premiumizes that experience. We find that when we take the exact same square footage and we put a little bit of love into it, we see our revenues grow three to four times what they were before. It's really quite amazing. Um, you know, we, we've got this great, great example of a location we did a, uh, about a year ago. Uh, I was walking the location with our local team, and I said, man, are you serious? Do we really want to do this one? It was sketchy. It was not a place I'd want to be. It was an old arcade that we were taking over. Um, within, within hours of our renovation, uh, we started to see families come in. We started to see mom and daughter play. And it all of a sudden, it is completely different business. That location, their revenue has gone up almost 10 times where it was before. It's, uh, it's quite remarkable. So it turns out our local guys were right. Um, so I just want to end on, on this here. Um, this is our, uh, you know, we're, we're thrilled about the rec room. And I think, you know, if I tie it back to what the, the, this event here, it really is about starting with that end in mind and starting with, well, what are you trying to achieve and, and sticking to that. You know, a lot of the way, we, we set this mantra of we wanted to create that, bringing that social experience, getting people out of their home and bringing that social experience to the forefront. And since we've done that, um, we've been challenged a few times uh, by outside voices saying, well, what if we did this or what if we did that? And we've been able to stay true to our, our, our mandate, stay true to why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, we do that both with Rec Room. We do that at Player One. We stand by why we're in that business and why we set out to do it. And I think that's a great barometer for making good decisions for your business. Um, that's all I have this morning. Good night. Yeah, right.